Thank you all for coming today to the Mesh Hair with Geometry Notes and Hair Curves um, live tutorial. Well, <laughs> um, hi, my name is Sara, and we are SM5 by Heledan. And by way, I really mean it like a royal we because it's just me <laughs> for now, but <laughs> um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what we do in SM5 by Heledan. So this GIF is uh, some of the models that we've made. We make very special medieval fantasy 3D assets and uh, we sell them in our store so we can fund the projects that we are very passionate about. And uh, to do these characters and these scenes from the novel that we are working on, we also created something that we think is very cool. We did this little character creator so we could reuse the same base and um, make the characters faster. And uh, because of it, uh, we can do the stories much better. We also take commissions in our shop and uh, we are always open to collaborations. So if anybody wants to collaborate with us in the website, you can find the contact uh, and we can always uh, start exchanging emails. So, what is this tutorial about? Well, it's about mesh hair that is made with hair curves. So you can continue uh, grooming it and you can animate it using geometry nodes. One of the reasons why I thought this was important is because it's very easy to switch between uh, cycles and EV. So for example, if um, now it really doesn't matter much because I feel like cycles has become really fast, but before when you wanted to render something faster, maybe you wanted to switch to Eevee and then you wanted to go back to cycles for the close up of the characters. So with this method, you can create almost the same hairstyle, uh, both in mesh for Eevee and in particles for cycles. And it looks almost the same with some level of degree, but it looks pretty cool. And it also, mm, it's great for exporting real-time characters for video game creation. So just with one click, you can switch from one to the other, and they both look pretty realistic. So let's try it ourselves. Now, um, the whole process took me around three hours to make, and I had to kind of compacted for the duration of this tutorial. So the video plays a little bit fast and I'm going to guide you through it more or less, but I <laughs> may run out of breath. So there may be some parts that I kind of skip. These videos are all going to be available in my YouTube channel and then they're gonna have a voiceover. So if anyone is interested in seeing exactly which node I used or where I connected it, uh, please go ahead and check it in a few weeks that I'll make it available. But for now, we are going to start by making these realistic hair textures right here. We are going to have an ambient occlusion, a bump, the color with an alpha map, a normal, and the position. Okay, so let's start. First, um, we are just going to do a plane, like, so it will be flat, and we are going to extrude one of the sides, and that's where we are going to add the hair. This part, I'm going to separate it. So it will have different materials. And I'm going to make sure that it's facing us because the hair otherwise is not going to grow well. And it's very important to remember to do UVs because if you don't do UVs, the hair is never going to attach to this surface. Now in that uh, little rectangle over there, I'm going to add the empty hair. And then with the grooming tools, I'm going to start adding some hairs. I'm not going to care so much about the length or anything. I'm just going to add a bunch of them separated, more or less like that. And then with the grooming tools, I'm just going to, I'm going to actually use the snake hook to 
kind of like drag them in a very uneven way, so it will be more realistic. They are not all the same length. That's always going to look good. I can also give them a little bit of a curve like that, and then I can brush them and make sure that they reach the end of the square, because we are watching it from above. That's how the texture is going to look. And um, in this case, I made a mistake, which is that I was supposed to maybe make it reach more to the side so it fills everything. You will see it later why. But in this case, I, I forgot. But for the tutorial in YouTube, probably I'll, I'll remember and I'll do it anew. So now that we have this hair, we are going to add a material. So we can see it. And we are going to create it over there. And we are going to set it there in the geometry nodes. The same name of the same material. And then for the plane that is behind, we are just going to make it transparent so it doesn't render. The same for the plane that holds the hair. And then for the hair itself, for now, I'm just going to use the, the principal hair shader, I think it's called, the, the one that comes from the folding blender because it looks really good. So I think I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to switch the principal that comes by default, and I'm going to add the principal hair. That's right. And there we have the hairs with the color. Now, using all the Blender tools, I'm not really using anything fancy here. I'm going to the Assets browser, and I'm just going to start adding all of the, the presets that we have there with Blender, which is... Uh, to duplicate the hairs, to clamp the hairs, and to curl the hairs. And then I'm also going to add the profile of the hair so the tip will be thinner. And the, sorry, yeah, the tip will be thinner and the root will be a bit thicker. That's what I'm looking for now. There it goes. And I'm just going to start playing a little bit with the, with the modifiers, making the hair a bit thinner, checking the perfect balance. And this, you can do really any hairstyle you want. In this example, I wanted to go for a wavy style, but if you want, you can do it super straight, or you can do it straight with a bit of messy hairs around, or you can do it very frizzy or with coils, any kind of hair you can do. As long as it renders realistic like this, it's going to work with the method. So for all kind of hairstyles, you can do this uh, the same. Then I'm adding a little bit of blend uh, hair curves, so it will be a bit separated, a bit more fluffy, it looks more natural. I'm adjusting everything until it looks right. And then I'm going to add another uh, hair system on top of this to add just a little bit of hairs that's going to be kind of like these hairs that get out of place and make it a bit more realistic. And for that, uh, again, I'm going to show the panel, go into the grooming tools, and I'm going to add a few hairs here and there. And again, I'm going to extrude them. Same thing I did as before. I'm going to use the the default blender presets to make it a bit curlier, a bit more like frizzy. So those hairs are like the messy hairs that make the volume more realistic. Once again, we also have to do the profile with the thicker uh, root and the thinner tip. Right now it's all the same length, so it looks really like thick. And here is where I made a mistake. We should have tried to make the hair a bit more touching the sides, but that will be for the YouTube videos. In this case, we'll have to be happy with this one. <laughs> now, there is fortunate that I left kind of a gap in the center, and we will see why later. It's a good idea to do that, leave kind of a gap right in the center of the texture. And now the hair is done, and I'm just checking the channels to see which channels I'm going to render. So I can later go into the channel selection uh, for the render, and I can say which one I want. I want the uh, depth, and I want the normal, I want the position, and I want the specular or any, any map that I think is going to be good for me later to make the material. I'm going to select it there in the render in the render properties. We position the camera, 
make it perfect square, make sure that the root is well seen. So you can see that already with the perspective, the, the hairs are a little bit separated and that's gonna look really realistic. And that is completely enclosed in the texture. And then we are selecting the set, and the position, and the indirect light. I don't know, I'm choosing a bunch, and then later we can decide which ones we are going to use for the final material that we are going to make. So there's the render. Now we are checking that everything works. And with the uh, depth map, we have to adjust it a little bit because it's all white and you can barely see anything and we can't use it like that. So with RGB curve, curves, you can move it a bit. So it will create the depth of the strands that are more in the back and the ones that are more in the front. And then the normal, the ambient occlusion and the position are going to be the ones that we are going to need. So now we have our textures. Next, we are going to prepare the mesh material. And it's going to look fluffy and nice, like this little ball here. <laughs> so again, uh, first to make the material, I'm just going to make a, like a plane and I'm going to make it a little bit curl, curved. So I can see how the light interacts with the hair once it's kind of like curving like this. I'm going to increase the resolution so it will be very smooth for the rendering. I'm going to also make it like shade smooth so there's no little squares or artifacts. And um, I'm going to reduce the light of the environment because I want to see how the, the highlights behave. That's the, the most important thing now for seeing good um, reflections. So I'm adding a little point lamp and I'm gonna move it around a bit to see how the highlight behaves. And right now we can see it is right there in the center and the, later we can move it around and see if it works well with the hair strands. And uh, we are going to create the shader. Uh, we are going to call it hair material. And this time we are not going to use any principal shader like the hair shader. We are going to make one with the textures that we just created. And so I'm going to start importing them and connecting them to the normal principal shader. So first the base color and then the alpha is going to go into the alpha slot. So it's going to become transparent. We can already see that the hair looks pretty good, but the reflection is just a ball. It's not stretching. It doesn't have any anisotropy or anything. So we are going to keep adding the other maps like the normal, for example, with the normal map node and we're going to connect it there. It's going to be a little bit strong, so we're going to reduce it just a bit. And then I like to amplify a bit the effect with the bump. So we are going to add the height that we rendered and we are going to mix it with the bump node and the normal and we are going to plug it there in the normal. And now I'm going to take off the color because I want to see just how hard the hair looks. And uh, I think it, it looks good, but I feel it's very hard. So I'm going to reduce it a little bit. And now I think maybe I reduced it too much, but it looks a bit better. So now we can see that the reflection is not just this ball. It's a bit more stretched already. It's already looking more realistic. And of course, I'm going to add a little bit of metallic. So the hair will reflect and a little bit of roughness. But the roughness, I don't want to just put 0.5 and leave it like that because then it's going to be very boring. So I'm going to use the color. I'm going to turn it into a black and white color. And with uh, RGB curves, I'm going to play a bit with it to make this map that it's almost gray. So it will be kind of like a 0.5 value, but it's going to have some highlights and some darker parts. So the roughness material is going to be a little bit more interesting this way. And then I'm just going to plug everything there with the color. And yeah, it's already looking even better. Already looks pretty good. But we are still seeing that the shine is very round. And we want it to be long and pretty with the anisotropy. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that well. but So there it is. We are going to add the position map that we rendered before. And we are going to add it into the anisotropy tangent. And uh, we are going to increase the anisotropic and the rotation too. And we can see I'm connecting it and disconnecting it to see the difference. You see, it's already kind of starting to like curl a bit around the hair, it's starting to look a bit more realistic.
and I'm tweaking it to see, oh, yeah, this looks good, this looks okay, okay, like that. And when I'm happy with the result, I'm gonna move the light around too to see if it looks good. Tidy up a bit too, of course. So, yeah, those reflections I think look much better. And now we are going to do something special with the color because why not? It's more fun, it's way more realistic. And we are going to make a system that we can create the hair and we can add highlights or gray hairs if the character is a bit older maybe. And we can also color the roots if the character, for example, dyed their hair or they have like the tips in a different color. And to do that, we are gonna use mix uh, color, mix RGB. And so I'm gonna choose some fantasy colors here so it's more obvious. So. For now, it's going to be a blue. We are going to use the ambient occlusion uh, as a mask. And we are going to make it, uh, we are going to control the highlights with a uh, ramp uh, color. So if we move it, the black more towards the white, the highlights are going to become more intense. And if we move it less, it's, it's going to be, sorry, less intense. So there you can see now I'm mixing blue and green so we can have these beautiful highlights combining. And now for the root, we are going to do basically the same. And we are going to add, again, a mix node. We are going to connect the one we just did because I feel like the root maybe should be on top because if, for example, you dyed your hair, um, the root would be one color and then the highlights would grow with the rest. So we are going to put it on top, but you can also put it under it. So that's personal choice. And uh, again, fantasy colors. <laughs> so it's very easy to see. And we are going to basically do the same thing with a ramp. We are going to use that as a mask to control the amount. Uh, and we are going to say uh, with a texture coordinate how to set the ramp so it's vertical instead of side to side. And so when that, we use that as a mask, we get there a beautiful blend that we can make it more intense or less intense depending on the effect of the hair color we want to achieve. Now we just check one more time that everything looks perfect. We are gonna make a little bit of a close up to see that the hairs look good, that the root looks good. And when we are happy with the result, we can move on to the next step, which will be to make the mesh cards and tubes that will go into the actual uh, hair curves. And it will be still um, able to be groomed and able to be animated with geometry nodes, but it will be mesh. So let's play with the geometry nodes. And don't worry, it's not going to be this much. <laughs> it's going to be a lot simpler for this example, but you can go as extreme as you want and you can start adding all kinds of things like we will see later. But don't worry, it's not going to be that bad. I'm going to use this sphere as a sculpt for now to make the fluffy ball that we saw before. And um, again, just add a hair system and a few hairs all around it so we can see how the cards behave with the mesh. I'm just drawing it all around. And I'm going to make a new geometry node that is going to be called hair mesh. And here, the first thing I'm going to do is to add a resample curve because sometimes when you're grooming the hair you're sometimes you're using the snake hook or something you can mess up the order of the vertices so with this resample you know in the end the final result is going to be very smooth and then we are going to add the arc node and that's what we are going to use to make the cards of the hair to combine them together the hairs with the arc we are going to use a curve to mesh we are going to connect it and we are going to use the arc as the profile curve. And of course, it's huge, so we need to adjust it and make it smaller. And as a default, it kind of already, because it's an arc, it kind of already looks like a tube. But I don't like to use this as a tube uh, because I've seen that there are some artifacts in the seams 
And uh, the only way I found to fix this was to use something alternative that we will see later for the tubes. So for now, we are going to use Arc. And we are going to make it less uh, resolution. Uh, you could use either like the lowest resolution. It's going to be just one uh, card. Or you can give it like a little bit of a slope like this. So it's like three sides. I like to do it this way because that way it curves. And it can cover the root a little bit better when you do characters. And um, we have to set the tilt because otherwise each hair is going to be facing any direction. But to make it more automated, the best way, especially when you want to do realistic hair, is to add a curved tangent. That way it's going to follow the natural slopes of the scalp, or in this case of the ball. So when we use the curved tangent and we put it into the tilt, you see that suddenly all the hairs are facing the correct direction. And uh, we inverted the arc, so it's kind of facing down. And that's going to look very good later on. Now we are going to set the material that we just created before we are going to select it there. And when we're going to render, we don't see anything. And that's like, why? Why isn't it there? Well, we have to make first a few settings, which is to add the UVs that are going to work with these textures. So I'm going to add in the material node, uh, sorry, in the material uh, panel. I'm going to add a UV node, and I'm going to connect it to all of the textures. But we don't have the UVs done yet. We are going to do that in the next step. So for now, we're going to leave it like this. And we are going to start working now, I think, on the tubes, because the cards are really working well. So even though the tubes, we can, the cards, we can still close it, but it gives artifacts. So instead, to make the tubes, we're going to use the spiral. And the spiral. When we put it for the first time, it's, it's going to be very weird, so we're going to have to tweak it a little bit. I'm going to replace it for now with the arc, so we can see. First, it's huge, so <laughs> we have to reduce the size of it. And then uh, the spiral has two settings that need to be the same, which is, I don't know if I can read it well, the start radius and the end radius should be the same. So for that, I'm just going to use a value constant, plug it into both of them. And we are going to set up there a small number, so it's not going to be too big. And you see there is creating the spiral. It's repeating itself and it's spinning out. So we are going to say that we don't want it to be spinning up. We want it to spin, but in the same position. So we set the height to zero. The resolution, we lower it to six. And the rotation, let's leave it at one so it doesn't rotate on itself and create more and more geometry. And then I'm going to just add a switch. So we can later on switch between the cards and the curves, depending on the number of polygons that you have on the level of realism you want. If there's any bold spots, maybe for a close-up, you want to switch into tubes. And then later, if it's a faraway plane for your character, you can switch into cards. So this is going to be very convenient. Now we are going to do clamp for the hair to make it more realistic. So that way we can create these strands that kind of like clamp down the same effect that we were getting with the Blender hair modifiers. And to do that, we are going to use a set radius. But when we adjust the set radius, it resets the whole thing. The whole tube becomes smaller. So we need to control that with an RGB curve again that we are going to use it for the factor. And uh, we are going to need to add also like the information of the curve. So for that, we are going to need a spline parameter and we are going to specify the factor of the spline so the RGB curve will know in which direction each hair is going and in which uh, direction it should extrude the hair, like clump the hair. And the clump is going to be the drawing that we do in those curves. So if we want it a bit fatter with a, a thicker, like smaller tip, then we make it curve like this. If not, we make it curve like this. Or we want the tips to be spread, then we higher that a little bit. And this same thing is going to work for both the cards and the tubes. But now I realize that the cards are very thin and the tubes were bigger. So we're going to use the same parameter. We were using the same value. And now both uh, cards and tubes are the same size when we switch with the button. So it's starting to look good. Now we have the hair created. We can still groom it. But we don't have the textures applied yet. And that's what we are going to do now. To do that, we need to make UVs. But we need to make UVs in geometry nodes. And that is very difficult. 
<laughs> it took me a very long time and watching a lot of tutorials to figure out how. So here it goes. I hope I can explain it well because I don't really understand it too well myself, but I'm going to do my best. So, okay, what we want to do is first capture attribute. So we want one capture attribute for the hairs itself, and we want another capture attribute for the shape that we are extruding on the hair. So we put two. But now in the newer version of Blender, there is, um, there is um, in the previous version, there were like a more options. Now you kind of have to plug it yourself. So we are going to add a, uh, what's that? I can't read that. I think it's a spline parameter, but it's a bit blurry. So I think it's a spline parameter. And we are specifying the factor into the capture attribute. So it's going to know the direction and the length of the hair and also the mesh that is being extruded. And now here, to make the UVs, we kind of want to make a card like this. So the X is going to be the thickness and the Y is going to be the length of the hair. So we are going to separate this with the separate X, Y, Z. And we are going to plug the length, which is the actual hair, into the Y and the width, which is the mesh, into the X. And that way, the UVs are done. We cannot see them, but they are. They really exist. <laughs> I promise they are there. Okay, so now we have them. And what do we do with them? Let's see. Okay, we are going to first save them with the stored name attribute. And we are going to set it into vector. And we are going to plug that vector that we just made. And we are going to give it a name, UVs. And now we are going to go to the material that we just made. And in that UV node that we put before that was empty, that, that's why we couldn't see the material, we are going to write UVs. But it's still not showing. Why? Why is this happening? OK, we have to go back to geometry nodes. And we have to save this same UV as an output. So we connect it there into the output group. And down there in that little thing, we have to write the same name, UVs. And then it happens. Finally, it's there. But it's reversed because we did the hair in this direction and the UVs were created in the other direction. Well, not to worry, we can fix this by multiplying it for minus one and it, that's going to just mirror it into the right position. So over there, we are going to make room and we are going to use a little math node. And we are going to use multiply and a minus one. And then it's going to flip it. It's going to flip it. And now finally, the root is where it should be. And the tip is where it should be. But oh, now <laughs> the root is side to side again. And that would have been easier if we had just used a texture that we made in an outside program. But we wanted to use Blender for everything. So we have to go back into the shader. And that doesn't work anymore. So we are going to remove that. And we are going to put a mapping so we can use our UV. So we are finding that mapping. And we are connecting our UV there. And now I really don't know why, but uh, it's going to be, well, let's see. Let's see what happens. But it didn't work. I had to use a gradient texture to translate it because this was a vector. And we needed a, a factor for the ramp that we were using. So I had to convert it, the vector into the factor with a gradient texture. And so I did that. And then I had to rotate it 90 degrees because before it was side to side and we want it from top to bottom. So by rotating it 90 degrees, we can achieve that. If we don't use the gradient texture, it doesn't work. It's because you have to convert the vector into something that the factor can understand. So the gradient texture comes in handy, but it's again reversed. So with an invert color, we can make everything work again. And now it's looking pretty, just like we wanted. <laughs> now I'm going to see the difference between the cards and the tubes. And you can see that there's a problem here. Because when we are using cards, the 
hair is more dense than when we are using tubes. And that is because uh, cards only have three sides, but the tubes have six sides. So it's using the same texture for both of them. So in the three sides, it's being compacted, and that's why we see double the amount of hair. So we are going to have to make an extra UV for the cards that it's half. And it was very fortunate that we, were, we had this gap in between. So we are going to just cut the UV in half and use that half UV for the cards and then the full UV with the whole hair for the tubes. And to do that, again, we are going to use just a vector math. So over there, we are going to add a switch. And this switch is going to be, later on, connected to the other switch. So the UVs will switch at the same time when we do mesh or when we do tubes. So yeah, we are going to add a math node there. And in that node, we are going to cut the vector of the UVs in half. So to do that, we're going to connect it to the one we already had, put it in multiply. And then in the X, which is the width, we are going to put 0.5, so it will cut it in half. But then if we do nothing else, uh, when we switch the UV and we try it out, everything disappears. And that's because the Y needs to be 1. So if we multiply, the height will stay the same. The width will be half, but the uh, length is going to be the same. And this way, we have the both uh, textures with the same density for the cards and for the tubes. Now, there is one more thing I can do, and is that I see that the roots are a little bit separated from the scalp. And now that we have the UVs and we have it all in geometry nodes, we know where the position of the root is. We can use that to attach just the root to the scalp, or in this case, the sphere. And uh, that's going to be kind of like the root attachment. So we are going to take the UVs that we just created. And we are going to separate again the X and the Y. And we are going to add an object info. And there we are going to select the scalp, the place where we want it to be attached to. And then a geometry proximity. So we will know the proximity between the hair and the scalp. Now we are going to get also a position a node. We are going to put it at the end of the whole things so it will once the hair is done it will attach that's going to be the last thing we do and now if we do that everything is going to just collapse into the scalp and we have to specify which part we want which is just the root so we have to kind of isolate the length and leave only the root which is the, the point where y is zero which is the bottom right there that is the y equals zero so we are going to use a equal uh, node we are going to put it as this selection and we are going to set it to zero so now only the place where the y is zero is going to attach to the scalp and the rest is going to remain nice and flowing. And then with the epsilon, we can adjust it a little bit if we don't like how it's looking. Okay, so there it is and now you see that there is a gap there in the tube, and that is the mistake we made before that I was telling you about, that you can see if we have made the hair kind of touch the borders, that maybe wouldn't happen. So if you guys try at home, please remember to make the hair as thick as possible, covering all the sides. And now we are done with the mesh hair UVs and the texture and everything. And 
I'm running out of breath going so fast. Are you guys okay? <laughs> Thank you. Well, so now it's basically done. We just have to polish it up and put all the outputs there neat and nice so we can just access it like it's just any other modifier. And that's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, so let's see it. Just grab all the things that we want to edit, which are first the switch, and we drag it to the input. And then you see that over there in the side, it already appears like a little switch button. And we are going to also connect to the same input the UV switch. So that way we are going to switch both the tubes on the cards with the UVs. So everything is going to be perfectly aligned. We're going to change the name so it's easy to know what we are doing. And then this uh, value that we were using, we're also going to control it from there. So the three inputs that we needed, we are putting it there as an input group. And there we can set it up again and it's going to continue working. So we don't need that anymore. And now the tilt, in this case, because I made the mistake of leaving gaps in the sides, you can see that maybe I want to adjust the tilt a bit only of the tubes because the cards is already being calculated automatically by the, by the tangent. So I'm going to also make a kind of like a switch more or less to only affect the tubes. So I'm going to make a I'm going to use a multiply value just because if I connect the vector directly into the input out there, there's going to be like three values of for x, for y, and for z, and, and that's going to be confusing. So if we use a multiply and you just multiply it by one, there's only one number that you have to put, and that's going to be the tube tilt. And now uh, this is for the subdivision. I added a bit of subdivision because sometimes it looks a bit wonky and a bit square. So you want to add a bit of subdivision for close-ups. And I'm forgetting to do this here, but it would also be interesting to put an input for the scalp. So when you use this in your own character, you can select the scalp, and then here directly in the modifier, you can say, I wanted to attach to the scalp or to the sphere or to the, the floor if you're making grass, because you could use this for grass too. And now that the hair is done, we can actually edit it and groom it and use the same assets that we were using with normal hair. For example, now I'm interpolating it. And you can see that it's working perfectly. It's interpolating the, the mesh. It's making this fluffy ball again. And then we can animate that. We can start brushing it or doing any hairstyle we want. And it's going to work just like hair curves, but it's all completely mesh. So it's really cool. We did it. Yay. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah, it looks like we have time. I've prepared a little like fast video to see it in action. Um, this is one of the characters from the transhuman for Blender creator that I'm, by the way, going to put for all of you guys. You can all use it for free soon. And uh, let's see how to do this hair that we see in this image. Really, really quick, because this is really like I made the video like three times faster. So we have the character there. We just have to append or link or import the things that we just did, remove the sphere and then select the scalp of the character, which is right there. By the way, the, the plugin already comes with hair built in, so you don't need to worry about all of this, but now we are going to see the one we made. So it's not attaching to the scalp yet because we haven't selected it. It's still, the root object is still selected as the sphere, but we are going to fix that in a moment. And now we can start grooming the hair, putting it in the position that we like, and see it's, not, it's connecting to somewhere else. But when we select the scalp, it attaches to the scalp only in the root. Now we don't see it because, again, we have to write there the UVs in the output attribute. I don't know why that happens, but it is important to remember. If you see that it doesn't appear, just check because it's always that. And yeah, there it is. We can just start changing the color, make some nice natural color that we like. Not the fantasy one we had make the roots maybe darker, or you can even like inverse it again and make the deep colored, but the root is uh, not colored. You can do so many cool colors and designs like in the previous photo that we had in the, in the head of the presentation, the tips were pink, but the roots were normal blonde. You can do all kinds of beautiful things like that. And then you can just groom it. See, you can see it being groomed and it's all a mesh, but it's behaving like it's curved. So it's really great. 
And again, you can use the same modifiers that we were using with the curve uh, hairs. So we can curl it, we can duplicate it, we can interpolate it. There's a bit of a problem with interpolation because of the scale. So if you ever try interpolating and you see that it doesn't appear, it's because the scale has to be really big. So you have to increase the number like million or something like that. And then you will see the interpolation. I had a hard time figuring that out. So um, in case it happens to you guys, just remember the size is the problem. And you see, you can really like use all of these Blender already included tools to curl the hair. And then you can just start adding new hairs to hide the roots, to make it more natural. You can even create a different uh, hair system with different settings to do the little hairs around here or around here in the nape. As you can see, it's mesh, but it looks like in that render, it looks so realistic. It really looks like real hair. And it renders really fast. You wouldn't think so, but when I render these, I lately always use the mesh hair instead of the curves anymore because I find there is more control now making hair with mesh directly uh, than with curves. The curves, I find that a bit more unstable. But in this case, it renders super fast. I think the, the video we saw at the beginning of the character creator, all the characters had the hair made with mesh, all of them. And all the hairs were different. There were some that had like straight hair, there were some with very curly hair, and it was animating perfectly, and it was all really just didn't take too long to render, like maybe one frame was like around three minutes or so, so at very high resolution, then the ones that had lower resolution was like one minute per frame, and it was like 200 frames, so it didn't take too long to render really. And if you were to use EV, maybe it would be faster, I'm not sure, but... Yeah, you can combine it and do as many different hairs with many different textures. Like if you, for example, did other textures for the nape hair with less hair, you could also do that. And it will look really good. So that's, uh, that's really it, but not the end, because you can go as insane as you want, and you can start adding all the crazy things that you can imagine. Like, for example, this over here is the nodes of the hair from the Transhuman for Blender plugin that has those, those purple things you see there in the back, that's four different sets of UVs that we did. Uh, for the short hair, for the wild hairs that stick out, one pretending to have curls, so you can like curl the hair without actually curling the hair. So you can add really as many things as you want, and uh, even parts like to fix bald spots around here or anything, anything is possible with the geometry nodes. So it's, it's really magical. I'm really excited about this. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys learned something. And I'm really sorry that I was going like <laughs> super fast. I'm going to upload a video with a more detailed explanation in the YouTube channel. So if you guys want to see that, it's going to be a bit maybe slower pace. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here today. And I'm here for you if you want any questions. <laughs>